Hello, my name's Mr. Payne. I'm the HVAC instructor here at Forbes Road CTC. Normally we'd have you here on a hands-on tour, but because of the current situation, we can't do that. So take a look at our virtual tour, and if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Thank you. All right. So we're going to do a hands-on tour. We're going to show you around. Okay. If you look over here, this is where we have our uh, project furnace and air conditioners. We've got a furnace, a couple of air conditioners. All right, yeah. And we have a couple of other furnaces that we installed and tore back up. See the residential the furnaces. furnaces. This is a high-efficiency furnace. This is an oil furnace. Many of you may have an oil furnace in your house. And we have Landon here from Riverview. He's checking out our residential furnace here, making sure everything's working efficiently. Awesome. This one's running as we're, as we're going through here. He's making sure it's running efficiently. So as an HVAC technician, you know, if someone has an issue with their furnace, they'll call you, and yeah. you would start by opening the door and seeing what the issue may be, taking apart yeah. and troubleshooting. Yeah, taking a look at it, seeing what's wrong. First thing you do is listen and see what's going on. There's our thermostat that's operating the uh, furnace. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to move down. We have our boiler. This is a residential boiler. It's not hooked up. Just not right yet. now, mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, if you have a boiler, hot water heat in your house, most likely it's something similar to this. So you're also not just learning how to troubleshoot, but do brand new installation of brand units? New installations of uh, heating and air conditioning, and yeah, that would be forced air like what Logan's working on, or hot water like we have here. We also do some maintenance oh. on ice machines. We have an ice machine right here, <clears throat> presently making ice. Okay. So you might do a lot more work on the, the motor part, the electrical, everything. On there. everything. everything. Cleaning ice machines is a big deal. When you get out in the field, if you're able to clean an ice machine, a refrigeration company is going to be happy to have you. Definitely. It's a, a ton of maintenance, and as you're learning, you learn how these things work by cleaning them. So you can also be learning how to work on, maybe not here, but like walk-in coolers and freezers, like exactly. of restaurants, or, right. you know, this is what you would find, like a restaurant, grocery stores, right. convenience stores. Yes, oh, exactly. Awesome. This is what we call a packaged air conditioning unit. It does air conditioning and heating, has everything right here. All you have to do is wire it up, connect some duct work, pour your air and runs in, and the air blows out here. Yeah, we can feel it here. Yep. Woo! We have the air conditioner running on it. All right, what's, what's the time? Cool. 48 degrees. Woo! Chilly. So, it feels great though. Right. So, we come over here, we come around this way, you see we have it running. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Landon here. Mm -hmm. He's checking pressures, he's monitoring. Uh, the low pressure on here so we can get ready to recover refrigerant. <clears throat> and the refrigerant is? The refrigerant is inside the uh, system. That's this is the air conditioning side. side. Okay. Air conditioning components and over here we have the heating side. This is where we would get the heat. We would pipe natural gas in through here, pipe it in, and then we could run this and bring it on and uh, heat up the, uh, the space with it. So this is a very in-demand field. We know if we have a home or business and the furnace isn't working and it's freezing cold out, you know, we need someone come out pretty much immediately. Exactly. So, so you have to be ready to go to work. Yeah, which is great for HVAC technicians because there's always going to be work available and yeah. it's highly in demand too. Because, I mean, yeah, we might be able to go a couple days without air conditioning, pretty miserable, but I don't heat think heat, heat we have to have, right? We do. We absolutely do. Yeah. Or if, um, you know, those walk-in coolers or refrigerators at the grocery store go yeah, we don't want to product. lose all that yeah. meat or produce so yeah, and that's what we call product and when the customer calls us and says we're losing product you better drop everything you're doing and get there and as we start to get into larger uh your larger systems or uh, industrial and commercial you're going to be able to run gas line and to be able to run gas line on those bigger places you're going to need a tool similar to this, which is called a power threader, power vise. And power this threader. Is this right. cuts threads in the gas line. So well, what is gas line and how does that work? 
Come with me, I'll show you. Okay. This here is gas line. And all these threads here have to be cut in. They have to be uh, cut into the, the pipe. You have them here, here. So when you here, connect this all up, you have to be able to connect to it to get to your appliance. So we have valves on here. We have our fittings. It's our 90. This is a union, another valve. So we got to make sure we have everything sealed properly, and we have to make sure that the uh, threads are cut in. We'll Definitely. Up, we'll deliver gas all the way down. And I can take it this way too. Awesome. And the way they do that is with this machine uh, over here. Power threader right here. Um, as you can see, we have a piece of pipe already in it that we used that we, that we threaded with it. Okay. Okay. What do you think? You think I should cut a piece of? Uh, yeah, let's check. Let's see it in action. It okay. Absolutely. What I'm doing is stick this in here. I'm going to cut the end off of it so I can show you how to how we're going to thread a piece of pipe on here, or thread the end of the pipe. So I'll make sure it's centered, and I'm going to tighten it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my pipe cutter over, get it into position, and we'll open it up. Now, would you have this piece of equipment with you, or would you cut this all like back at a shop and then take well, it? Unless it's a you know, it, unless it's a big job. Mm -hmm. If it's a big job, you would take this out onto the job. And yeah. Use it. But if it's not that big of a job and you're only cutting half inch pipe, we would take one of these over, which is a pipe vise, and we would use hand dye. Okay. Yeah, we would ratchet it by hand. So manually do it versus exactly. a machine. If we have a lot of if we have a lot of uh, pipe to do and a lot of pieces to thread, then yes, we would want to so have this available. Now that we have this going, I'm gonna give a little bit of a snug. And here's our switch to run this. Let's move forward and forward. And we're gonna go ahead and cut this uh, thread off the end here. All right, so we're just cutting the cutting the pipe right now, All just we're to get doing that is off. Cutting the pipe. We're cutting it. The, we'll say cutting it the length. Mm-hmm. Run it slowly until it comes off and snaps off. Okay. Okay, now, and when you look into the end of this, there's a burr that goes around the inside. You mm -hmm. have to remove that so it doesn't break loose into the system. Okay, yeah, it's kind of like so, a little lip or something. Correct. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this device here. This is called a reamer. Wow. Slide that into place. I'm going to hit the trigger again. And I'm going to in on it. It's going to pull that out. You'll see how nice and smooth it is when I'm done. There you go. Okay, so that's all nice and smooth. The burn's mm -hmm. gone. Now our next step, we're going to bring over the die. Okay, this is our die. I'm going to mm -hmm. close okay. the die up. I'm going to get it started with a little bit of oil on it. I'm going to go ahead and get it started. We're going to start cutting and keep feeding it oil. Run that until the die goes to the last two. Okay, now that we're at the end, we're going to reverse it, and then it'll help clean off the, uh, the the pieces of metal, the threads. Once we get to the end, we can open the die up, slide it off. Wow. There you go. Mm -hmm. This is our refrigeration shop. Okay, we have a, right now we have this, uh, we have a trainer over here that we're just getting started to figure out. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this gives me a range of uh, uh, things that I can do with it to show uh, problems in the system, how mm -hmm. it properly work. Um, I can also cause uh, problems in the back. There's toggle switches that I can uh, create issues to to have you figure out what's wrong. Oh, is that so? You uh, will create issues in all of your equipment and yeah, have your kids. I kid... do it too. I do it on yeah. the other stuff, but this one here is designed with just switches in there. Okay. Okay, it's designed to sabotage. You know, right, so right, you know, yeah. So that they can troubleshoot. All right. So what do we got going on over here? What we have here, this is a a, a cutting torch setup. 
Um, I like to have the students play with fire. It's fun to melt steel with fire. Definitely. <laughs> and we have a piece of eighth inch in plate right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna light this torch up and we're gonna cut this uh, steel with the torch with fire. Yeah, normally so, I probably would try to do the hands-on, but since, guys, I am filming, I don't think I'll be aware of the proper safety gear. So, correct. although I would love to do this, it is fun, but you guys watching can come and try it out if you'd like to, so. And for safety reasons, I will not be wearing a mask because it fogs up and I'm not taking a chance of getting hurt or anybody getting Absolutely. hurt. Absolutely. spark. <laughs> now we've got the plane. Okay, now we're gonna find, we're gonna heat it up and then hit it with the oxygen. We're gonna blast that steel out of it. I'm just gonna do this little piece right here. Is the steel going to turn red when it's like yeah. hot? It'll turn cherry red and as soon as you see it starting to melt, you hit that oxygen trigger and it starts blasting. Here we go. So you've never done this before? All right. Okay, Logan, what I want you to do, how I want you to hold it, hold it like that, put your hand out, just lay your hand out like that, and move this hand back. Okay, slow, you can see how that metal starts to fill in. Keep that trigger pulled, it should be okay. If you a little too fast, it'll start to fill in behind you, so just get back and blow it out. Find your spot. There it is. You just have a classroom just for some theory. This is, a, uh, this is where we do a little bit of theory and, okay. and I lecture. Yeah. And then we have our electrical uh, part of the program. These are some, uh, some boards. These are our demo boards to learn how to wire different types of here that shows the different types of switches, receptacles, and wire yeah, sizes. What we do is uh, we have students over here now. They're working on their projects. Um, we have Trent here. Uh, Trent's from Franklin Regional. Right, Trent? Yep. Okay, and uh, he's just going over a few things, tightening them up, um, and making sure the wire lengths are right. There's correct ways of doing installs. And this is what we call the rough-in portion of it. Students will be graded on their rough-in, and then the next part will be adding your components like light or light uh, fixtures and mm -hmm. switches, mm -hmm. and then they'll be graded on that. And then the final grade on it will be when we light them up and make we sure need they to, work that's right. great. We need to be able to move the air around you know, the house, so we have to know how to do uh, duct work. Okay. So duct work. So looking around, if you were in your basement or behind the walls, for example, up here, is duct work. Yeah. They made an HVAC sign out of sheet metal or duct work. Um, and so usually these are running pieces. from your furnace up to your vents. That's how you yeah, get the it air. Delivers the air to your vents and mm -hmm. your, the warm air vent in your bedroom or living room. Um, and then we have the cold air returns that bring the cold air back so it can be heated back up and sent back throughout the house. Okay, these patterns here will produce this, this rectangle duct, oh, wow. okay? This is just a miniature version of the duct that carries the air in your house. Mm -hmm. So to learn how to do that, to be able to create this, you have to know how to make a pattern. So the first thing you would want to do is you go to the job and you draw a three-dimensional piece with your sizes that you need. Mm -hmm. And then you draw it out on a pattern, okay? And you use this pattern, you transfer that to the sheet metal and cut all the spaces, places that you're supposed to cut, bend in all the places you're supposed to bend, okay? And seal it where you need to seal it and you have yourself a wow. piece of ductwork. And you use all these machines over here to do that, huh? Correct. We have a, what's called a jump shear, okay? And that refers to a pedal. We use to cut it. So we would stick our sheet metal inside here, and if we have that set to a certain length, 
Mm-hmm. And we just use the pedal and we just cut it. Wow. Okay, so that's our, that is our jump shear. That's how we cut our pieces of sheet metal. So then once we get all our pieces cut, and as I mentioned before, we have to bend mm -hmm. the sheet metal. Yeah. So we use a device called a brake. Wow. Okay, this is, this is a very big brake, and we're proud to have this in our classroom. It's a very old brake. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to stick a piece of metal in here, and I'm just going to make a random bend on it to show you how it works. I'm going to pull it in here, hold it so it's tight, step mm. back, and I'll pull. And we're going to take this, that, step this back. Mm. And we're going to take oh. this, fold this up to about 90 degrees. In other words, a, a perfect elbow. Okay, like a, a 90 degree bend. Come back. Get a nice, wow. crisp bend. Very nice. Okay. So again, this that's is awesome. Yeah. So we've seen cutting through metal, bending it, forming it, and then of course all of the uh, furnaces and air conditioner, troubleshooting, installation. So a lot of different areas in this program, in this field. And I'd say if you are someone that likes to tinker, maybe you like to take things apart, you like to fix things, like to troubleshoot, this could be a very good career for you. This is an excellent career. As I tell students, if you, were, you, know, if you guys were here, folks were here mm -hmm. um, in person, there's nothing in my house I can't fix. Okay? Right. Because I know electricity, I know refrigerant, I know how to bend metal, I know how to run screws, I know how to draw. I can fix my own washing machine, my own dryer my own refrigerator, my own air conditioner, my own furnace. And this is a skill that you'll never lose either. You'll always have that. So whether you, you know, you take this class because you want to do it as a career or, you know, you're just interested in getting those skills in your belt. There definitely right. is benefits to all the areas. Well, you get introductory skills into electricity, into sheet metal, into refrigeration. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and like I said, it's all introductory, but it gives you a basis to be able to take it. Right. Forward. And I'd say out of all of our programs here at Forbes, this is one of our highest placement programs where students are either getting jobs before they graduate or shortly after, because there is such a, a high need and you get plenty of phone calls from- I get tons of phone calls. I can't keep up with it. Right. But you have, to, you have to be good. You have to work hard at it. Definitely. Um, to be able to get a job. And then one last question for you, sure. Mr. Payne. What kind of certifications do you get in this program? Well, we start off with, um, Every first year student will get an OSHA 10 hour course. They'll get certified in OSHA, okay. which is a lifetime certification. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's demanded by most all contractors to have an OSHA 10. Okay. And then that'll convert to next year. You'll do another OSHA class and you'll have an OSHA 20. I like to see my students at the end of their, uh, their time here to have an OSHA 30. Okay. And then we also add on the EPA to be able to work with refrigerants, um, you have to have you have to be certified. All right. So the EPA certifies you under the Clean Air Act, and that's Section 608. And what that does is that allows you to purchase refrigerants. It teaches you how to recover refrigerants. We're trying to save our environment, and refrigerants are a big culprit of that. Mm -hmm. So that's another certification you're going to have. That's and awesome. then, then there's optional certifications. You can get refrigerant 410A safety. Um, you can get HVAC excellence. Um, there's uh, there's other things that, that uh, career safety. Knowing that you can come out with industry recognized certifications that employers need you to have. So right. you have what you need to go right into a job again, either before graduation or shortly after. Cause right. we do have, you know, students that are already working in the field that are still in high school. But then, you know, again, you'll take those yeah, certs with you. Good stuff. All right. So those of you that are watching, if you have any interest in this program or any of our construction programs, you know, Mr. Payne's information will be at the end here. We can certainly have you contact him. If you have any questions or you want to come in for a personal tour, we can set that, certainly arrange that for you. If not, maybe we'll see you here in HVAC next fall. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Visiting. Payne. Have a great day. Yeah.